welcome to GMAT Tuesdays. My name is Kevin, this is The Ball, and it's Tuesday. Um, I'm coming to you from Magoosh, and we are going to talk about a math question. Um, this was actually a question that a student asked. They left a comment on a previous uh, video that I made, and they wanted to know how to solve this problem. So, let's just dive in and do it. I need a pen. Let's use a green one. Um, so the question says, if x, y, and z are three different prime numbers, which of the following cannot be a multiple of any of x, y, and z? All right, so that's kind of a, you read that first and you're like, what? So sometimes it's useful to just go back through and kind of like pull out the important details. So we know we got prime numbers that we're dealing with, and they want to know which one, which of these cannot be a multiple of any of x, y, or z. So it cannot be divided by x, y, or z. So um, for these types of questions, you can dive in and just plug in numbers for x, y, and z. Although there is a crucial insight, which I will get to, which will save you a lot of time. Um, so if you know your uh, properties of numbers, you can definitely save a lot of time on the test. But let's just take a look at how you would solve this if you didn't know this crucial insight, but what you will know at the end of the video. Um, so as you can see, I have my x, y, and z here. We can just choose prime numbers for um, to plug into our answer choices and find which one of these answers is not a multiple, multiple of x, y, or z. So let's say that this is five, three, and two. So, uh, x plus y. Five plus three, that equals eight. Is eight a multiple of one of these numbers? Yes, it's a multiple of two. So, we can eliminate it. y minus z, y, three, minus two, equals one. And is one a multiple of these numbers? It's a multiple of all these numbers, so we can eliminate it. X, Y plus one, so X times Y plus one, so five times three. It's 15 plus one equals 16. Is 16 a multiple of one of these numbers? Or excuse me, is one of these numbers a multiple of 16? I've been saying this wrong. Uh, yes, it's 2. So we can eliminate x, y plus 1. Now we have x, y, z plus 1. So it'll be 5 times 3, which is 15 times 2. It's 30 plus 1 is 31. Are any of these numbers a multiple of 31? No. All right. So this is looking good. That's supposed to be a star. It's a bad star. Um, all right. One more answer for choice to check x squared plus y squared. So 5 squared is 25 plus 9, because 3 times 3 is 9, and that gives us 34. Um, are any of, the, or any of these numbers a multiple of 34? Yes, 2 is, so we can eliminate it. So this approach can get you to the right answer. I actually cheated a little bit because I was very smart with the numbers that I chose. If you were to do these opposite, 2, 3, and 5, you'd end up having these two, which means you'd have to plug in more numbers again to see which of these two um, is actually not a multiple. So that's going to be time consuming on the test. And the GMAT rewards you for finding shortcuts, for knowing stuff about numbers. And one thing that you should know, now walking away from this video, is what a coprime is and what that means. So here's the crucial insight. Two consecutive integers are coprime, which means that their only common positive factor is one. Okay, so how does that help us? If you were to look at these answer choices, and know about co-primes, and know about multiples, you would know that x, y, and z, if you were to just have the, that answer choice, you would definitely have to eliminate it. Because 
x, y, and z is a multiple of x times y times z. But x times y times z plus 1 is the next consecutive number. So in this case, x, y, and z would have been 30, and then the next consecutive number would have been 31. Looking at these two numbers, you would know because of co-prime that 1 is the only common factor. Thus, that means that x, y, and z, or excuse me, x, y, z plus 1, 31, cannot be a multiple of x, y, or z. So, there is the longer way to get to the answer, and then there's always going to be some sort of shortcut they're going to reward you for doing your due diligence, spending a lot of time understanding uh, your integer properties, understanding the very, fa fa uh, very fundamental basics of uh, integers and number properties. So, now when you approach a problem like this, you can remember co-prime means that there are only there's only one common factor, one positive common factor between two consecutive numbers. And if you knew this, going into this question, you wouldn't have to fuss around with plugging in all these numbers. You could just go directly to D and choose it. All right. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this, please feel free to put comments down below here. They're going to be down there somewhere. Um, we'd like to hear from our students. Like this came from a student, so feel free to ask those questions, and we'll make videos about them. Be excellent to the universe, and I'll see you soon.